Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Hey, I know that many of us are excited about the new year. And, um, and many times we think, I can't wait for this new year. I can't wait for 2019. I'm sick and tired of 2018. I can't wait to just get past this. But here's the problem. Just because there's a new year doesn't mean there's going to be a new you. Because the old you is going with you. And so if you want to have a new experience, then you have to have a new mind. Jesus said it very clearly. He says, you can't put new wine and old wineskins. And so I think that, that if you're not careful, you can be that person that thinks that just because the clock changes over from 2018 to 2019, all things are new. Yes, all things are new in Christ as I renew my mind. But if you want to be a new you, then you have to have a new mind. And a new you will always have a new experience, new miracles, new breakthroughs, new victories. There should be new everything, new everything. But that takes intentionality. That takes focus. That takes des desire. That takes decision making. It, it starts with how I think. And, and I, I, I hope that tonight I confront some minds and some hearts as we prepare for 2019. And, and that's what I'm going to do tonight. So we, we may just, you know, have some very practical teaching. But I, I think it's very important for us to be able to walk away with some application and really begin to prepare for 2019 and think about the rest of the year and, and, and really, um, like, describe and define what you want to accomplish for God what do you want to accomplish for your family? What do you want to accomplish in your career? What do you want to accomplish in your call? What do you want to accomplish, period? And, uh, and we're going to be talking about vision boarding. Have you guys ever done a vision board? How many of you have ever done a vision board? Okay, a few of you. Okay, that's cool. All right, good. Then you're the perfect crowd. So this is, this is basically a vision board. Let me just show you. I took one of our staff members' vision board, and, um, and she started putting pictures of a preferred future. That's all vision is. It's a picture of a preferred view, future. And so what she did is she started posting some specific things that she wants to accomplish. Now, this is, she's more of a 5, 10, 15-year visionary right here. Not that, not that it needs to take 5, 10, 15 years. I really believe that uh, God can do things speedily. He can accelerate things. But our job is just to begin to post some things up. And so basically, uh, you post pictures of a preferred future of what you want to experience. Uh, in your life, uh, with your family, with your children, with your calling, with your career. Can you all see this up here? Okay. And then what's pretty awesome is you post some scriptures that, that illustrate that preferred picture or that preferred future that you want. And, and let me tell you something. There's nothing more powerful when you speak God's word over anything and everything. Um, and so if we're going to take the word from God, that he spoke to us for 2019, which is what? No. Nope. I can. I will. The end. And that's birthed out of what verse? Philippians 4.13. Exactly. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. And now that's awesome. I think many times if you're not careful as well, we can just get all excited about a word but have no vision for it. And it's not just about reading God's word and, and, and thinking that, well, God's going to make it all happen. No, he's not going to make it all happen. I mean, think about it. He gave you the helper, the Holy Spirit. He's the helper, not the doer, right? So he's going to help you accomplish those things that you desire. But God wants us to do our part as well. And doing a vision board is something tangible. It's application. And it's something that you can look at every single day. Day, and I'm praying and hoping that Elevate Church will see one of the greatest years of victory and breakthrough and some challenges and some ugliness and some processes, but it's all that that's going to develop some faith muscles. Amen? Amen? That's what we need in our, in our, in our, in our lives, sitting in our homes. Um, there's this very successful doctor who writ he's written many, many books, and he, made this, he gave this quote that was so impressive to me. Here's what he said. He said, you have brains in your heads and feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. 
You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you're the one who will decide where to go. You know who said that? Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Famous doctor. That's pretty deep, I think. I think that's pretty deep. You know what the, the depthness of this is? Is that you get to decide where you take your life. You decide where you want to go with this life. You have to take complete responsibility for your personal life. You have to take personal responsibility for your health. You need to take personal responsibility for your finances. You need to take personal responsibility for your progress. You need to take personal responsibility over your call, over your career. You have to take 100% responsibility if you want to see something amazing happen in your life. There is too many wishful thinking Christians in the body of Christ, and that needs to stop we got too many wishes. Too many wishes. Well, I wish, I wish I can be out of debt. Well, let's stop wishing and let's start getting out of debt. But you need a plan, right? You need to decide. It's, everything starts with a decision. Say decision. And, and listen, the decision comes from where? My thinking. So the moment you start making decisions to be responsible then God can take you serious. See, God can't take anyone serious until they start taking him serious. And I think we have a lot of head knowledge, but we want to go from head knowledge to heart knowledge and say, Father, regardless, no matter what it looks like, I will trust you. I will believe you. I will stand on your word. And when I've done all to stand, I will stand there for I'm going to keep standing until I see that vision come to pass. Now, I know that, once again, this is like a, you know, 5, 10-year vision. But the vision board I want you guys to work on, and I'm going to give you a little bit more information here right now. I want you to work on a one-year vision board. Because if you can't conquer and accomplish some things in one year, forget about five years. you got to start with, with steps. you got to st start with those baby steps and start seeing some progress. And as you start seeing some progress, I really believe that you're going to start finding some joy. Now, check this out. There's three types of people in this room right now. You ready? Number one, there's those who make things happen. Those that are like, man, I'm going to take my vision board like Pastor said. I'm going to go home and on Thursday night or Friday night or Saturday, whatever you want, I am going to have a vision board party. And I'm going to see this thing come through. Then there's that other person that will just watch things happen. Just going to watch on the sidelines. Have you ever watched a football game like, my Patriots are playing this Sunday? Yes. I know I got a lot of Patriot haters here, but that's okay. That's all right. I got one Patriot, I think, in here. With... Go Patriots. But check this out. When, have you ever watched a game and, and you're like all into it, and especially for you football lovers, um, and I catch myself doing this. You're watching the game, and, and I go from, from just watching to coaching as if. As if they're even listening to me. I'm like screaming at the TV, no, do, do reverse. I'm like screaming and yelling just like, what kind of stupid, ugh. And we start just talking as if we were the ones coaching it. Well, that's what many of us look like. We watch a lot of people progress. We see a lot of people in the game. But what happens is so many of us are just watching on the sidelines and we never get into any game. God wants you to get into the game of life. He wants you to get into the game of something that he has created for you on this earth. Every single one of you were born with a divine purpose. You weren't born just to suck the oxygen of the earth and live and die. That's not, that's not your calling. God has a specific plan for every single one of us in this room. It doesn't matter where you come from. Your pedigree, your background. God, listen, God doesn't qualify the qualified. God is just looking for some people that will take him at his word, that will believe him with all of their heart. And you watch, God will do amazing things through people like that, but you got to make a decision. And so the third person is, well, let's say him again. Number one, those who make things happen. Number two, those who watch things happen. And number three is those who wonder, what happened? Have you? Have you ever heard someone say, and it hurts me because I've been with many people when they have breathed their last breath. And, you know, it's an honor to lead them into glory, but it's also pain when I've heard people on their death base say, I regret some things. And they start breaking down what they regret. And, and that's, that's what happens is if you, just, if you just live your life 
and one day wake up and start saying, I wonder what happened to the last three years of my life. I wonder what happened in the last five years, the last 10 years. What happened? And the reality is that there's those three types of people in this house. But guess what? You can decide to be number one. Where you're going to make some things happen this year. You're going to make some things happen, not by yourself, but you're going to make some things happen with God. But that makes, that, makes, that makes you and I vulnerable to be honest with ourselves and say, I wonder which one I am right now. Do I just watch everybody just living God's purpose, God's plan? Or am I someone that's, that's even right now maybe thinking, yeah, I wonder what did happen to the last one. Man, what happened this year? Or are you the person that's saying, you know what? No, I made some things happen this year, and I'm pretty much satisfied. And if you're not any of the last, uh, the, first, the first guy or the first girl, then you know what? Make a decision. I'm going to make some change. In 2019, I'm going to take 100% responsibility of my life, of my emotions, of my feelings, of my progress, spiritual progress, you know, uh, family progress, uh, business progress, whatever it is, you take 100% responsibility and you watch what God will do. Now look at this, because when you think about just the stories of different men and women of the Bible, God was always speaking vision to his people. He was always giving them a picture of a preferred future. Proverbs 29, 19 says this. He says, when, when there is no clear prophetic vision. Now notice this, because I want you guys to understand this. Many times we love to write down goals or we start writing down a vision for our life but most often people do not include God in the picture and so you start looking at goals and vision with things that you personally desire but notice the verse says is that God wants to give you a prophetic vision that means that God wants to give you a vision that comes directly from him and it's okay to desire. It's okay to dream. God wants us to dream. But where is God in that dream? Like where does God fit in that picture? Let's say you were someone that wanted to become a lawyer. Okay, awesome. I love that you want to be a lawyer. That's wonderful. If that's the dream that's locked in your heart, great. But where is Jesus in that picture? Where is that? We have wonderful lawyers for Elevate Church. I love them. And what I love about them is that they are God-fearing lawyers and so anytime we've been in any pickle here with the city or whatever let me tell you something we start with prayer and we start praying and we start declaring God's faithfulness God's righteousness God's God's divine plan for the situation and I love the fact that there are lawyers in this in this world that love Jesus Man, we need some more, you know, government people that love Jesus. We need some more, you know, people in the music industry that love Jesus. We need more people that are in the entertainment industry, that are in the medical industry, that are in whatever industry that love Jesus. Whether you're someone that works in retail, that you love Jesus, that Jesus is in everything. It's evident because you love Jesus. He has to be, it has to be a prophetic vision, not just a vision. If you read the Elevate Church's vision, which, man, I look at it now, and I'm like, wow, Lord, we have pretty much seen over 60% of what God gave us already being done eight years later. Like, it's already happening, and we're just like, wow. Go back and read the vision. Why, why, why are we seeing it happen? Well, because we wrote out what he wants. It was his prophetic vision for Elevate Church, and there's so much more that we're going to accomplish here as a church, but you got to write the vision. Look, it says, where there is no clear prophetic vision, and notice the word clear. People quickly wander astray. But when you follow the revelation of the word, heaven's bliss fills your soul. What does that mean? That means that when you finally have a clear prophetic vision from God, when you finally, finally know clearly what is it that God wants me to do? Like maybe there are some of you here that you have a desire to help children. Okay, great. But what does that look like? Help children on drugs. Help children be, you know, better educated. Uh, help children uh, learn how to read that may be illiterate. Like what clear vision do you have? Because so many times as we prepare for the new year, here's what it looks like. We call it New Year resolutions. Here's what they look like. I want to lose weight. I want to get out of debt. I want to go to church. I want to read my Bible. Uh, I want to pray. Um, I'm gonna, I need to go to the gym. 
Um, come on, help me out. What are, what are some other ones? Some typical ones. Come on. Y'all don't write anything. Okay, praise God. <laughs> wow. Help you, Lord. Um, I need to make more money. And, and so we, we, we write down these things. Let's be honest. We write down these things. I want to lose weight. I want to make more money. I want to get out of debt. Um, I want to be happier. I want to be nicer. And we write these down. But let me be honest with you. That is wishful thinking. It is not clear. If you're going to write a vision from heaven, if you're going to write goals, then you need to define them. You need to describe them. For example, let's say you want to lose weight, okay? All right, don't just say, I want to lose weight. If you need to lose weight, let's say you wanted to lose 30 pounds, then describe that. I want to lose 30 pounds by June of 2019 then you have to define how you're going to lose them 20 or 30 pounds by june of 2019 that means then then you have to put some bullet points under it and say i will discipline my body you know when paul said i buffet my body that didn't mean i buffet my body okay so we got to go ahead and start making some changes right you got to get some discipline in this buffeting of this body you got to put it into subjection into submission paul said man i beat it up i tell it what to do it doesn't tell me what to do so when you go home after church tonight and your stomach your little you know intestine is like crying feed me just say no i rebuke you you're going to bed <laughs> take some authority i double dog dare you no here's what you're going to say well it's christmas we'll start in january first right I know, because that's what we said last night. We were eating. We're like, come on, it's, it's, it's all right. It's still Christmas. Let's just tear it up. We're liars. <laughs> Do you, you understand what I'm saying? So you got to be a little bit more specific. Let's say you say, well, I want to I wanna get out of debt, praise God. Okay, well, how much debt are you in? Let's just say you're $100,000 in debt. I'm going to I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of $100,000 of debt. Okay, well, come on, slow down, cowboy. Let's say you want to get out of $100,000 of debt, but you only make sixty-five or seventy-five dollars or $80,000 a year. How is that realistic? You're not. But I thought you're supposed to trust God. Yes, but God also gave you a brain. He wants us to strategize. He wants us to think. Remember what Dr. Sue said? <laughs> Yeah, we have to make sure that we have to be specific. So let's say you were $100,000 in debt. How about just say, you know what? By December of 2019, I will pay off $25,000 or $30,000 of that debt. Like be specific and then describe it. Define it. What, what debt are we going to cancel out first? You know, most people think always pay the big dog first. Wrong. Always pay the little debt first. You know that little credit card with like... $200 on it, pay that sucker off. Why? Because the moment you pay that little debt that you have, it's, it makes you feel like I'm progressing. I'm actually doing something about my debt. And it really builds some esteem. It builds some confidence and some confidence inside of you. And you're empowered and encouraged. You say, man, if I can pay off 200 bucks, I can pay off 500 bucks. I can pay off 500 bucks. I can pay off 10,000. And before you know it, you will hit that goal. But you have to describe. You have to be very clear with what you want to accomplish. God gave us the gift of imagination, didn't he? Like, for example, look at this. Look at this apple. Do you guys see the apple? What color was the apple? How many saw green? Okay. How many saw red? See? The power of imagination. I just said, look at this apple. And y'all saw an apple. There is no apple. You call those things that be not as though they were. God gave us the gift of imagination. We can imagine what direction we want to go. We can imagine what debt we want to cancel. We can imagine. We can begin to imagine how much healthier we can live. We can imagine that sickness, that disease that's been attacking your body. Maybe it's something that you've learned to coexist with. Maybe it's time to stop learning how to coexist and decide that sickness does not belong to me. That thing needs to go. I don't care what that may, what it may be. It can be the smallest little thing, but if, it, if it's something that bothers you, then believe God. Imagine what it would be without it.
Just imagine it. It's the gift that God gives us. It's a beautiful gift. In the book of Genesis, you see in Genesis 11, 5, 6. Let, 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 before we put that up, let, let, me, let me tell you something about this. These are some evil people that are living in, in Babylon. And they're wicked. They're evil. They don't, they don't believe God. They're, 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 they're living in their own ways. They're living in their own will. And I want to paint this picture to you because so many times, you know, we, we look at people that are like filthy rich, wealthy, and, and you're thinking, God, how come they have everything and I have nothing? Because those, those people know how to apply God's principles. Do you realize that God, he says, I'm not, a, I'm not a man that I should lie. In other words, if evil, wicked people apply biblical principles, God's word does not return what? Void. That means that God will do it for anyone who will believe it. And I'm going to show you and prove it to you. Because the people of Babylonia were wicked, evil people. And they said, we're going to build a tower. Come on, there's that, there's that, that rich person. There's that, that person I will conquer the world. They said, we're going to build a tower. And this tower is going to be so big, we're going to have it reach heaven. Talk about vision. Talk about imagination. Talk about dreaming. These people don't even love God. They're not even for God. But yet they're dreaming. They're believing. They should put some conviction us and say like, man, if wicked people, if evil people can take God's principles and see the fruit of it in their life, what is wrong with us? They're doers. We're hearers. People that make things what? Happen. Okay, now let's look at the verse. So God responds with this. He comes down, look, Genesis 11, verse 5 and 6, guys, it says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. So they obviously didn't reach heaven yet, but it was close enough for the Lord to come down heaven's steps. And the Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Can you imagine if you as a family, like let's just take your, your, your kids. What if, and then we'll take it to the church. What if you as a family, as a, as a, as a core group, started speaking the same language? What if you started thinking the same way? What if you started believing the same way? God said, if people did that, he said nothing would be impossible for them. What if all of Elevate Church, what if we were all to really get into this and really take God's vision for this house? Because if you call this place your home, then we have to treat it like it's our home. We have to take care of it like it's our house. We have to believe for it like this is the house of God where God has given us something amazing to do, not only in our city, not only in our state, but globally because that's the vision God has given this house. And we will get to it. We're going to continue to expand it. We're going to continue to grow it. But think about this. What if we all started speaking the same language? Language. God is saying nothing would be impossible with you. The reason most families are not progressing is because they don't all speak the same language. They're all talking different languages. And it's foreign. You got too many languages in the house. God says, man, when you have unity, man, that's, that's, that's when I release my power. He said nothing is going to be impossible for them. Nothing. Evil, wicked people. And yet, all they did was, let's imagine. They started with walking outside, and they said, man, hey, can you imagine us building a tower? Yeah, let's build this tower. And we're going to build this thing, and it's going to go all the way up to the heavens. God was so impressed that he himself had to come down and check out the city. I want heaven to be so impressed with Elevate Church that he literally has to come down and say, what in the world? They actually are taking my vision and making some things happen. That's what he should say about your personal life, about your family life. Man, heaven comes down. Do you understand that when you walk in God's, God's obedience, when you walk through God's prophetic vision, that's attractive? It attracts the presence of God. It attracts the power of God. It attracts the healing of God. When you start quoting scripture like, and by his stripes I, I was healed, that attracts heaven. Heaven likes that. You know why? Because all of heaven agrees with that language. 
The reason we don't see a lot of breakthrough as we want to see in our body is because we're not agreeing with God's word. We agree with our own opinion. We agree with our own thoughts. We agree with our own everything. And God's saying, okay, now tell me how that's working for you. God already gave us a language, and it's called word. And he said, and life and death are in the power of the tongue. And he says, choose life. So you have a decision. You and I have a decision to make to choose what we're going to say in 2019. Amen? And so that, how does that work out? Well, I'm telling you, it starts by journaling. I have boxes and boxes and boxes of journaling. It starts with journaling things that you can begin to imagine. Just journaling the things that you want to do. Like it all starts with this. Like just start writing. I, 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 I dare you. Like for you that are just sitting here listening to me, like I dare you to start taking notes. Like just start with that. I promise you, man, things are just going to, things are going to begin to move. Like, let that be, let that be your discipline. Trust me. And I'm telling you this because I've done it. I, I take notes anywhere and everywhere I go. Why? Because I'm God's student. And I know that I'm going to learn something from anybody. And God can speak to me through a man who does not love God. And God just can speak uh, to me through a man that does love God. But God can speak from both. If he can speak from an ass, he can speak from anybody, right? <laughs> Remember Balaam? That's the donkey he was talking. I would have been there taking notes. Like, okay. So God can speak. And sometimes, listen, you can be reading a secular book and something will pop out and it's a principle. But let me tell you something. There is no principle that any rich person, any successful person on this earth has that I can go ahead and find a scripture and slap that thing on whatever it is they said. I can quote a scripture for every single word that comes out of a successful person. Now we just have to apply that word. But what if you started doing this? What if you just started, like, writing, I see myself living a healthier life? What if you just started writing that every day? You know that if you start writing, there's something about a pen. Don't text it in your notes, okay? Like, actually go old school. Grab a notebook and pen. There's something about the way the brain connects with the hand. Do you know that you retain more when you write it down with your own penmanship than it is when you're typing on a computer? When I preach, I first write my message on, on paper. You know why? It helps me retain better. Then I type my message on my iPad or my, my laptop. But I always write. Why? Because as I'm writing it, it's getting in my spirit, man. That's why many times I don't have to go to my notes very often. Why? I've already wrote it down. I've already, I've already read it over and over and over again. Before, you know, I just come out here. And, uh, and of course, I still keep myself structured because I don't want to forget some points. But let me tell you something. After saying it over and over again, man, it just bleeds out of me. That's what we have to do when we write. So what if you just started writing, I can see myself being healthier, eating healthier. I can see. And you start imagining yourself. Man, eating that broccoli and those carrots, and, and then you see that, wa that whopper. And see, see, here's the problem with, with us. We, 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 we have more investment in the word yes than the word no. We invest more time in our life with yes, yes, yes. I wrote that down this morning. I wrote it in my journal. I got a brand new journal my daughter got me for Christmas, and I wrote down Mauricio in 2019. You will say more no's than you have in your 22 years of walking with God. Unless the Father says, that is what I want you to do, you're not going to do nothing new under the sun anymore. Amen? Because everything that comes to me looks good. Like, hey, Pastor Mason, want to do that? Yeah. Want to do that? Yeah. Want to do that? Yeah. Why? Why? Because it has to deal with winning souls. But now I'm coming back and say, well, wait a minute. But God, but did you call? I know you didn't call me to everything, so I better focus on the thing that you called me to. As a matter of fact, they did a study on 500 millionaires. And they asked them this simple question. What was it that you can say that contributed to your success in this life? What was it? You know what they said? Writing goals and staying focused. All 500 said the exact same thing. 500 millionaires. Who wants to be a millionaire? Not the show, but who wants to be a millionaire? Well, listen. If you can be clear with the vision, you can do it. I can. I will. The end. It's a decision. See, so many of us, we get so stuck on who we are right now. And who you are right now may not be, you know, what, what you desire to be one day, but it's keeping you in bondage. And you're saying, well, I'm not smart enough. Okay, well, start reading books. 
Well, I've never, I don't have a degree. Okay, well then, uh, you know what? How about watch YouTube? You know, or how about this? Uh, maybe go back to school. Do something with your life. Like you're never too old. You're never too young. You can do something. And so we cannot keep making excuses for why we're not progressing. God give, has given us the richest thing on planet earth, and it's the word of God. I'll take it a step further. What place do you think in this entire world that is the richest soil? I'm talking like, man, they are rich. It's the grave. You know why? Because in the grave are songs that were ne never written that people wanted to write. In the grave are businesses that never got launched or started. In the grave are sermons that were never preached because someone was too afraid. In the grave was someone who was called to be in office in Congress that was just too scared or didn't think they had it. In the grave is, ju is just so many dreams that died with people that just never accomplished it. That is the richest soil in this entire world. It's the cemetery. The cemetery. And here we are. We're alive right now. We have an opportunity to decide that 2019 is going to be different. I'm going to make some things happen. Are you guys with me? Come on. I see myself running 10 miles. Man, I can barely run around, you know, around the block. Praise Jesus. Okay. I see myself running around the block. You know, I see myself, you know, lifting weights. I see myself exercising. I see, start writing it down. Write it down. I see myself. I see, before you know it, you will see yourself doing what you wrote. I promise you, you will see that. Look at what Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Let, let me tell you something. When you write it down, you're giving you permission, but you're giving God permission to come into your life. Look at what Habakkuk 2.2 2 says. It says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the what? Vision. And make it what? Plain. Don't complicate it. Don't get all weird. Don't get all spooky spiritual that you're earthly no good, okay? I get it. Be spiritual, but don't be spooky. Okay? He's the Holy Spirit, not Casper, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so be very clear. And he said to me, write the vision and make it plain on tablets. Well, they didn't have paper back then the way we have it today. We got notebooks. Write it down on the notebooks. And look at this. That he may run who what? Reads it. So it's not just about writing something down and then boop. You know, 12 months later, you go back to him and be like, I wonder if I did any of it. And you realize that, man, I didn't do anything I said I would do. I'm still, I, I keep rolling over my minutes every year. I'm rolling over dreams. I'm rolling over goals. I'm rolling over, I'm rolling over all these things, and I'm just not seeing fruit in my life. So you got to write it down. Um, writing goals and staying focused, remember that. You should write that down. As a matter of fact, they say that, that um, people that write down goals, okay, are 98% have a more likely chance of being successful in life. People who write goals have a 98% increase of being successful in life. So if you have not seen success, that's only because we haven't written some things done. I can, I can honestly say that we've had some success here at Elevate Church, and we're not done yet, I promise you. And it's been because at Elevate Church, and I tell my staff this, and if there's any staff members here, just yell it out. If it's not written, there you have it. If it's not written, it doesn't exist. And so the only reason that we have seen things come to fruition is because we write it down we make it plain, so when we read it, we run with it. We got to run with it. Uh, Walt Disney was a perfect example. I'm closing already. Walt Disney, perfect example. When he used to sit with his team, um, and I'm going to start doing this with, I, I think I do this a lot with my team too, but I don't know. When, when he used to sit with his staff and, and people that were responsible for helping them make things happen, um, he would throw out an idea. And if the staff agreed, like, oh, my God, well, that's such a great idea. That's awesome. Yeah, let's do that. He would say, nah, we're not going to do that. And so he would keep imagining and keep thinking about other things. And he would start throwing out some, like, um, like bam, 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 idea after idea after idea. That's why, you know what, I encourage you, write 101 things of what you can see. Because something's going to stick. And so he would start telling them, da, 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 da. And you know what his staff would do? Like, nah, man, that's impossible. He's like, that's what we're going to do. See, 
if the dream is possible for you to accomplish it, then it's not a dream from heaven. It's your dream. Your dream should look impossible. It should be difficult. You should look at it and be like, how am I going to do this? That's from heaven. But if you can make it happen, then you're still dreaming too low. You're not, you're not dreaming high enough. As a matter of fact, when, you know, they, they, they were giving them some challenges with this little small amusement park called Disneyland. And they said, oh, my God, that would never work. And, of course, he did it. And, of course, right before he, he had it open and, and, and they, they did the ceremony, he passed away. And his wife is on stage and is giving the speech. And, and this young reporter says, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Disney, uh, how does it feel to, to be here today without your husband who didn't have the opportunity to see Disneyland? And she said, oh, no, young man, let me correct you. No, 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 no. See, today we are the first to see it. He saw it long before all of us. Let's bring it now spiritual. Back again. Abraham would as it was at his lowest point of life. He's living in the desert in a tent. He's with his wife, Sarah, and, and, and they're disappointed because they want children. No children. And God looks at him and brings him a clear prophetic vision. And the Lord comes down and meets Abraham and says, Abraham, come out. And that's the word for you tonight. For me tonight, for those watching on live stream tonight, come out. Come out of your discouragement. Come out of your disappointment. Come out of whatever lie you have been dwelling in. Come out. And so Abraham walks out. And God says, Abraham, he says, I will make you a father of many nations. And Abraham was like, God, he started denying it. Like, that's just a word. But here's what God does. He says, Abraham, I want you to look up. He says, do you see the stars in the sky? And Abraham was like, yes, Father, I see it. He says, count them. And Abraham's like, one, two, three. I can. He said, I know. That's how many children you will have. And, and at first it was difficult for him to receive, but it was almost like, okay. And sometimes God will give you a vision and you'll think you're crazy. And you walk right back into the tent. But then God comes back and he says, Abraham, come out. And he says, I will make you a father of many nations. And he said, he said, can you count the grain in the sand? Mind you, you're desert. Uh, no, I can't, I can't. God says exactly. That's how many children you will have. Do you realize what God was doing? God understood and knew that Abraham lived every single day in the desert. So while he was walking in the day, what was he looking at? Sand. Sand. What was he looking at? He was looking at an image. Sand. And every time he saw sand, he started saying, whoa, wow. And then every single night, what did he look at? So what was God doing? God was painting a picture of a preferred future. And he was saying, Abraham, every single day I'm going to keep sand and stars before you and one day you will see that you will be the father of many nations and you will be the father of faith. Amen? And guess what? Who's sitting in this room today? We are the seed of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. You are the seed of Abraham. And what was the secret to Abraham's progress? Faith. Here's the definition of faith. Quickly, look at this. Quick, quick, quick. Definition of faith, guys. Come on, help me out. Vamos, we can do it. We got it. Did I not give it? I didn't give it to you guys. All right. It's too good to be true. My bad. Look at this. Let me give it to you quickly, quickly. 
definition of faith. You can write this down if you're a note taker. Faith is to be fully confident of what is not. Faith is to be fully confident of what is not. Seen as though it is happening. Faith is to be fully confident of what is not. Seen as though it is happening. Faith is being confident of what you can't see right now happening. But in your spirit, man, you can see it. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith comes by, or, or faith is a substance of what? Things hoped for. It's the substance. What's the substance? You and I are going to do vision boards. So what am I asking you to do? Well, tomorrow I'm going to have a vision board party in my house. And we are, I bought this cork board. You can go fancy, whatever you want. Uh, you can buy a cork board or you can buy, uh, what's that thing called right there? It's kind of like a cork board, right? It's the same thing, just a little bit different. Or you can buy a white board, whatever you want. And here's what you do. You do, can, do you have my points, the last points? Give me, this is what you're going to do. Here's, the, here's the, the strategy. Not the smart, but my points. Um, okay, number one, clearly. You're going to define you're going to define the goals. Every say 10 goals. You're just going to, you're going to get 10 things you're going to accomplish in 2019. And then you're going to define them by using the smart system. And the smart system I'll show you right now. Uh, and you can Google it, smart system. It's pretty awesome. Number two, that's what we use here at the church. Number two, research images that illustrate each goal. So you're going to only do 10. Every say 10. If you do more, you're crazy. You're crazy. Unless you're someone that's, that's disciplined and you already accomplished goals, then go for more. But if you're not, don't do it. I, I promise you. You, it, it, you, won't, you won't do it. Because remember, we're talking about things that are bigger than you. Okay, research images that illustrate each goal. So here's the picture. I mean, here's, let's say here's the goal, written out goal. And then there's an image that illustrates that goal. Okay. Number three, place a scripture that illustrates what you're believing for. Let's say you need healing in your body. Man, find, find a scripture that specifically deals with your body that you can confess every... Don't put 20 scriptures. Just one scripture or two scriptures that you're going to chew on every single day. And that word will become flesh in you. Number four, then you're going to pray for it over it daily. Every day before you walk out. And I've done these vision boards. And everything I've done on my vision boards, I've seen them all come to pass. From the spiritual things to even the practical things. Like I wanted a boat. I got a boat. I did. I needed money, but I defined it. Well, I don't have money to buy a boat. And, and I started defining every single little thing. And before you knew it, I got blessed with a boat. I mean, God will do it. And, but every day you look at it, right? I saw myself before I was ever in the nations preaching. I said I would be in the nations preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ because I wanted to go back to my roots, back to uh, Latin America and bring Jesus. I didn't even speak good Spanish back then. Man, my Spanish was like all broken. They used to have to have interpreters for me. I grew up speaking English every single day. My mom worked seven days a week, so she spoke Spanglish to us. So I would know like frijoles and like, you know, uh, hungry, just simple things. But let me tell you something. When I came to Christ, I made a decision. I will learn how to speak Spanish. And I started working on it. And then one day I fired my interpreter. I said, sir, today you're fired. And I preached my first message just a few years ago. Just a few years ago. Just like a year or two years ago. First time by myself. Why? I build confidence. Why? Every day I said it, man. I can do it. Every, every day I believe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. It's, it's vision. Man, now I, I've been on radio. I have spoken to up to one million people on radio. That, I, I put a picture of that on my vision board. God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. All right, so you put that image, and then you pray over it daily, and then you do number five. Then you pursue it in faith. Pursue it in faith. Put the smart goals out there. You guys can take a picture of that if you want. Okay, smart goals, very simple. Be specific. Define them. Number, uh, number, not number, but M. Let, make sure they're measurable. All right, make sure that there's, there's, there's got to be something that says I'm making progress. There's got to be, you know, a, a measuring stick. Something has to say that something's happening. Uh, action. Come on, it's not just, you know, looking at it every day. But you got to take action. What are some steps I'm going to take to see this goal come to pass? Realistic. Come on. 
Don't be cray cray either. I'm going to be a millionaire, praise Jesus. You know, no, okay, well, right now, how about let's just get out of debt before we can be a millionaire, right? Like just start, be realistic, but also set some very stretchy goals. And then uh, T, you need a timeline. Do you realize that every goal should have a deadline? When we do anything in, in our staff meeting, when we start planning things, you're like, okay, deadline. I want it by this date, by this time, in my de- on my desk, or I want it emailed. It has to be a deadline. And I ain't going to tell you we're perfect at it, but let me tell you something. We're on our way. Everything has to have a deadline. So in other words, if you say you're going to pay that $500 credit card uh, bill that you have, then you make sure that you say, okay, by May of 2019, that 500 bucks will be paid off. Be very, very specific. You, get, you guys got this? Is this okay? Stand your feet. Let's get you guys out of here. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.